Hey, this is Owen. If you're comfortable, leave your first name and state at the sound of the tiny truck backing up. Uh, hey, Owen, it's Dan from Florida. Um, I was wondering if you thought that, you know, the evangelical voting, you know, that the Trump supporters, you know, the ones saying that Biden will never be my president. I'm wondering how you think that their tune will change after the 20th of January where he's you know, sworn into office, you know if they're going to start making some kind of conspiracy theory or saying that Trump is still the president, even if we don't know it or something like that. Um, just wanted to know your thoughts. Thanks for, for, thanks for all you do. Bye. That's an interesting question. Um, are Trump supporters going to go further and further into conspiracy land? And I think ultimately the answer is yes, some of them will. But not all 75 million who voted for him. I was looking at a poll recently, basically the percentage of people who believe that the attack on the Capitol was a good thing or a bad thing or whatever else. I believe that the poll said 86% of the U.S. population says the people who perpetrated the attack are terrorists and 5% say they're patriots. So that leaves 14% who don't believe that they're terrorists, and 5% believe that what they did was a good thing, that they're patriots. If you do the math on that with, say, 350 million people in the country, that evens out to somewhere around 15 to 17 million people who believe in the Trump cult, who are actual full-blown members. Versus the 75 million who voted for him. Now, to put that into context, Jehovah's Witnesses have about 8.5 million members. Mormons have somewhere around 15 million members. And Scientology has about 40,000 members. Now, remember the numbers we're talking about here, 15 to 17 million. So we're looking at a group of people in the United States that's roughly as big as or slightly larger than Mormonism. Now that the U.S. is going through the process of basically denazification for, for these groups, what happened in Germany after World War II, what the U.S. and the Soviet Union did to Germany afterward by banning their symbolism and their rhetoric in public spaces and doing the Nuremberg trials and things like that, now that the U.S. is going through that process, I believe that number is going to shrink significantly. But I think that as the number gets smaller, the remaining members of that group are going to become more and more radical. We saw something similar happen with Alex Jones. When he was banned from certain social media websites, he lost his ability to evangelize and spread his message to the mainstream group of people. But the people who watched him before are even more radical now because they feel like they are being wronged. They feel like they're being persecuted because their favorite commentator has been kicked off of every social media platform. Was it right for him to be kicked off of every social media platform? Yes, because he was calling for violence and propagandizing. That is reason enough for me. Was it right for Trump to be kicked off of social media? Yes, he called for violence. He caused violence. And he propagandizes nonstop. So in those two cases, I believe it was right for them to be removed from social media. And the end result will be they'll start to lose followers. They won't be able to bring in as many new followers as they could before. But the ones that are currently members are going to become more radicalized or they're going to leave, one or the other.